Okay, so now I want to tell you about this brand new way of combining functions that just doesn't exist with respect to numbers. So now, how would this look? Well, let's think about it. Suppose I have two functions. So one of them, let's say f of x equals 3x minus 1. And suppose I have another one, I'll call it g of x, and that equals 2x squared plus x plus 1. So these are two functions, and remember what these things mean. They mean that if you give me an x, I can plug it in here and find out what f of x is. I can give you the y value. Well, we talked about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing these functions. But what about actually putting these two functions together and actually composing them into one function in the following sense? Suppose that I, I first take an x value and plug it in here and actually get some sort of output, but then use that output to actually put into g. So I sort of take f and sort of shove it right into g. So I sort of not just add them or subtract them, I sort of actually inject f into g. Let me say again how that would work. I would take an x and I would evaluate this. And then I would take that as the answer and put that in for x here. So visually it might look like this. You have the x's here and that will then take via f values to y's. But what if I take those y values and use them now as inputs for g? Then I'll get something else out. How would this look? Well, let me show you with this example. If you take a look at the f function, here, are some, here I plot some points. So for example, at minus 1, if you plug that in, we get uh, something weird here. We get minus 4 here. If you plug in 0, we get minus 1. If we plug in 1, we get 2. And 2, we get 5. I think there's a typo here. Let's hope. And I'm thinking how to write this in in case. You see, if you put in a minus, it should be a minus 4, I think. There we go. See, you can fix these charts on the fly. No problem. OK. So anyway, there's a chart of some values for f. Let me show you a chart of some values for g. For example, if I put in minus 1 for x, what do I see? I see a 2 minus 1 plus 1 is 2. If I put in a 0 for x here, I see 0, 0, 1. If I put in a 1, I see 2 and 1, and 1 is 4. If I put in a 2, I see uh, 4 times 2 is 8, 9, 10, 11. So in fact, these are, this is a chart for the g values, and this is a chart here for the f values. So to see this kind of thing in action, let me put this like this. Let's see what happens if, for example, I start with 0. Suppose I start with 0 and plug it in here. If I plug in 0, that would give me a minus 1 as an answer. But what if I take that minus 1 and use it as input into g? So I go to here, minus 1, it should spit out 2. So I'm basically using one function to get an answer, and then I take that answer and put it into the next function. We can't do that with numbers. There's no such thing as putting numbers into another number. But yet here, we can actually do it. Let me show you how this would look with these function machines that we saw a while back. So I have an f machine and a g machine. The first thing I'm going to do is take the 0, and I'm going to take the 0 and put it through the f machine. Now what should happen? Well, we should see the value of the function uh, when I evaluate f at 0. So let's try that right now. So if I put that in, let's see what happens. High tech prop here. And out comes, voila, what we saw on the chart, a minus 1. So in fact, there's the minus 1. Now what I'm going to do is take that answer and immediately put it into the g function. So if I take that answer and run into the g function, what do I see? Well, if I put this into the g function, what I see is, ooh, it takes a while to get to come out. I see 2. So the final answer is 2. So I started with 0. That gave me minus 1. And I plugged minus 1 into g, and I got 2. There's the answer. And again, you can see that on the chart, I started with 0. That gave me a minus 1. And then I took the minus 1 and put it into this function. And when I plugged away, I got the 2. Let's try another example. How about if I plugged in a 1? If I put in a 1 for f in x here, then that would give me a 2. And what if I took that 2 and put that back into the g function for x? Then that should give me 11. Do you see how I take, the, I take the 1, that gives me a 2, and I take the 2 and plug that in, and that gives me an 11? Let's see, if that, let's see that principle in action. So I'm back to here again. Now I take a 1, and if I take the 1, and put it right in, let's see what happens. Put the 1 right in, 
and out comes, well, there's the 2 we expected. So that's right here. That's the 2. And now what I have to do is take the 2 and put that through the G machine. So I take the answer and put that through the G machine. And let's see if that gives us the 11 that we thought. It gives us the 11, just like we thought. So in fact, this is a way of taking a function and combining it with another function that's not adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, but instead is composing the two functions together. I take an answer from one function and use that as the input from the other. So I have an input to f. It comes out as output. And I use the output to go as input into the next function. So this is called the composition of functions. And in fact, the way you would write this is exactly as, as you may think we would say it. For example, let's do the 0 example once again. If I look at f of 0, that's some number. What number is it? f of 0 is minus 1. And now if I take that number and use it as input into the g function, what I would do is just write g of all of this. So g of f of 0. What does that mean? It means you first find f of 0, you first find this quantity, and then once you have that number, you plug that into the g function. This is the composition of functions. Sometimes this is denoted using the following notation, you write the g function and then a circle and then the f function. So it's like goff. Doesn't mean multiplication. What it means is the composition of two functions. If you have an x value, you first see where f sends it to and then take that answer and put that answer into g. So let's do some examples. For example, what would goff, or g composed with f as normal people read it, of 3b. Well, what would I do? First, I would figure out f of 3, that's the, this thing, and then I would see where g sends it to. So what's f of 3? Well, I go back up to the function f, and I plug in a 3 wherever I see an x. And I would see 3 times 3 minus 1. Well, that's 8. So this would be g of 8. And so now what I have to do is go back to the g function and find out what g of 8 is. Well, what's g of 8? Let's see if we can do that really fast. So g of 8 would equal 2 times 8 squared, which is 64, plus 8 plus 1, which is 9. So here we'd have 128 plus 9, which equals 137. So this answer would be 137. So what is g composed with f of 3? it would equal 137. And how did I get it? I first took the 3 and used it as input into the f function. I got that answer and then took the answer and used it as input into the g function. All right, uh, let's try one last example just to see that, in fact, this can actually go the other direction. What if I took the following? What if I took fog, f composed with g of 3? What would that mean? That would mean. First, I figure out what g of 3 is. So I just first do the g. Whatever says here, I do that first. And then I compose that, take the answer, and put that into the f function. So what's g of 3? Well, if I put in 3 for g, what do I see? I'll see a 9 times 2. That's 18. 18 plus 3 is what? 18, 19, 20, 21. And 1 is 22. So this is going to be f of 22. So that answer, that answer is 22. Now I take that answer and I put it into the f function. So I put 22 in for x, which would be what? 66 minus 1, which is 65. So notice that f composed with g of 3 is 65. However, g composed with f of 3 is 137. They're not always the same because I'm plugging in first into one and then into the other. And so it's important to understand what the differences between these two things are. This says, first take the number 3 and plug it into g, and take that answer and plug it into f. Whereas this says, take the number 3 and first plug it into f, and then take that other answer and plug it into g. The composition of functions. We'll take a look at a lot of examples of these coming up next to get a real feel for how to compose function, a whole new way to actually combine functions together.